Hello students. Today we are starting with the new chapter that is modes of reproduction. So in the sexual reproduction of flowering plants, in that the first topic is modes of reproduction. So in this topic we are going to discuss what are the different types of reproduction mechanisms that are present here, and in the plants what type of what type of reproduction it will take place, and which of the organisms. So in the last classes we discussed that in the plant kingdom they are divided into five types: algae, bryophytes, theridophytes, gymnosperms, and angiosperms. So how these algae they will undergo reproduction and different types of the algae we are also discussing there. But here we are going to discuss what type of or what mode of reproduction it will take place. Okay. So today we are starting with the modes of reproduction. In this topic, first we have to know why we need to study about these modes of reproduction. Because any organism on the earth, they cannot live for more than certain time. It has to die. So, but the Homo sapiens species, yeah, Homo sapiens species is there. So consider we are a human beings, and we are a Homo sapiens. So we are a particular species entire this world. So this species, it is continuing from millions to thousands to million years. This species is continuing. How this species is continuing? So like that, the plants will also there. So these plants are more native to the land before the humans. So these plants are also having many species. All the species they are continuing. They are continuing without any lapse. So all the organisms they have to survive for certain time. After that, it will go for the death. But how the life process is continuing? The life process is continuing by the process called as reproduction. Without reproduction, any organism it cannot give a progeny. This progeny it will not give a another progeny. So the reproduction it is considered as a vital and the important process to undergo our life. So this life it is carried out from our parents. Now we will give birth to the next new young ones. So this is called as a life cycle. So first we will discuss that what is the definition of the reproduction. What is the definition of the reproduction? Reproduction is nothing but it is a biological process. It is a biological process in which in which one organism in which one particular organism organism give rise organism give rise a new offspring a new progeny or offspring progeny or offspring this is called as a reproduction reproduction is nothing but it is a biological process yes actually any living organisms they has to undergo a process called as reproduction to survivability of this species on the earth so it is a biological process in which one organism give rise to the new progeny that means if we are giving a birth to a new individual that is called as a new progeny or new offspring offspring anna gaane progeny anna rendu okate okay so the plants these plants when they are when when they are present on the earth these plants when they are present on the earth they live for a certain time so consider they live for one year after that it has to undergo death but before going to the death it has to it has to undergo the reproduction process so first we have to know the life process that is present between the birth to the death birth to the death so the life process here it is called as it is called as a life cycle it is called as a life cycle the process that is present between the birth to the death is called as a life cycle or life process 
In between, in between from the birth to the death, there may, there may be a different stages. Different stages. Consider there is one plant. So this plant, this plant is arised. So that means it gave to the it. Uh, it is just now. It is present on the earth or soil. So the plant is there. This plant it will undergo three stages. It will undergo three stages. Vegetative phase. First, it will undergo vegetative phase. Vegetative phase is also called as a juvenile phase. It is also called as a juvenile phase. So first, it will undergo vegetative phase, and then it will undergo a reproductive phase. A reproductive phase. After the reproductive phase, it will enter into the senescence or aging. So it will enter into the aging. Or senescence. Senescence. So any plant, if it is give birth to one plant, then it has to undergo three phases. In the the first one is vegetative phase, next one is reproductive phase, and the last one is the aging or the senescence. So it will go, it will give birth here. So it first it will enter into the vegetative phase. After that reproductive. So at the reproductive phase. they will give rise to a new individuals they will give rise to the new individuals after that after that it will enter into the aging and senescence there the plant will give the plant will give life so that means it will undergo death process so based on these life span the place or from the birth to the death from the birth to the death this is called as a life span or life cycle life span or life cycle so the process between the birth to the death is called as life cycle or the life span next after this after the entry of vegetative reproductive and aging phases all these plants they have to undergo different types of reproduction process so each and every plant so consider uh, you might have seen a banyan tree that is uh, present before 100 years back before 100 years back and it is continuing their life so this banyan tree this banyan tree what is the life span of that banyan tree we have to know what is the life span of the rose plant and what is the life span of a uh, ulfia so first we'll give some examples regarding the life span so the life spans of so the life spans of different plants in that the first one is banyan tree the first one is banyan tree banyan tree it will live for more than 1000 years it can live for more than 1000 years sometimes it may be 1000 to 3000 years also so it will give more than 1000 years it will live for more than 1000 years and the next one is a peepal tree peepal tree it will live about 90 to 100 years it will live for 90 to 100 years and the next after peepal tree the next one is a moss next one is moss mosses they live greater than 100 years they live greater than 100 years and the ferns royal ferns a royal fern it will live more than oh sorry so these mosses they live 30 years they live 30 years and the royal fern it will live more than 100 years 100 years and the next one is a rice plant a rice plant they will live this rice plant they will live about 5 to or 3 to 7 months or 3 to 5 months 3 to 5 months and the next one is carrot carrot so this carrot it will live about 2 years it will live about only a 2 years and the next one is a rose plant a rose plant it will live for 5 to 7 years it will live for 5 to 7 years 
so these are the plants that will exhibit different types of lifespan so that means comparatively these rose plants it is living more than it is living more than rice plant and it is living more than a carrot so these life spans they are dependent on the different plant species it will be depend on the different plant species and uh, if there is an external factors if they are influencing if they are influencing if they decreases their life span that means these external characters are influencing so much so these species are going to be extinct so enabling these uh, sexual reproduction of flowering plants to undergo birth to undergo birth to the different types of plants based on their life spans so this is about the life span another one is a wolfia 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 actually it is an angiosperm it is a microscopic angiosperm and it can live about only 14 days it can live about only 14 days actually it is a green color plant when you observe a picture in your sexual uh, in your modes of reproduction you can clearly observe how the wolfia will be the green color structures just you can touch with your fingers that you can touch with your fingers so based on their life span the different phases will be depend vegetative reproductive aging or the senses okay so after the finishing of this one how they are going to give rise a new plant how they are going to give rise so algae are the bryophytes pteridophytes gymnosperm and angiosperm how they are undergoing with the different types of reproductive procedures so before entering into the reproductive procedures we have to know what are the different types of reproduction process will be there okay so once again we'll go with this one reproduction is nothing but it is a biological process in which it is a biological process in which uh, one organism give rise to progeny it will give rise to a new individual that is called as a progeny and what is mean by life span or the life cycle the process from birth to the death is called the between in between process from birth to the death is called as a life span or the life cycle so when a plant when a plant is rising on the soil then it will undergo three phases vegetative phase reproductive phase and the senescence or the aging phase so the different life spans of a banyan tree it is about greater than 1000 years people tree that is 90 to 100 years and the mosses these mosses they live for um they live for 30 no actually this is for 30 weeks a few weeks the mosses they can live for only a few weeks and the royal fern it will grow it will give a life span about plus 100 years or greater than 100 years and the rice plant it is about 3 to 5 months and the carrot this is about 2 years and the rose plant here they the life span of the rose flower is 5 to 7 years and the wolfia it is considered as the smallest angiosperm it can live about only 14 days so based on the life span we can consider how they are reproducing can we consider it no actually if this is if a simple organism it can reproduce uh, much much uh, better when compared with the multicellular organisms okay so this reproduction it will takes place a very important to survivability and and to continue the life process on the earth okay so now we are going with the reproduction procedures or reproduction types
question it is divided into two types in that the first one is asexual reproduction asexual reproduction and the next one is sexual reproduction sexual reproduction so what is the difference with the asexual reproduction and the sexual reproduction here in asexual reproduction here there is an involvement of only one parent so here there is a involvement of only one parent one parent but in sexual reproduction there is an involvement of both the parents here there is an involvement of both the parents both the parents that means two parents they are involved and here in the asexual reproduction here it is an exact copy of the parent here the exact copy of the parent that means if this is a parent cell so consider this is a parent cell this parent cell same as like the progeny will also have same morphological character and the chemical characters are also so they are identical to each other so here there is no genetical exchange there is no genetical exchange direct exact copies of the parent exact copy if the parent it is having a flagella then here also it will get a flagella so if it is having a cilia then here also they will get a cilia okay exact copies of the parent so parents these are here these are considered as offsprings so these are the offsprings and these offsprings are identical to each other identical to each other and they are identical to the new offsprings and they are identical to the parent also so that's why these offsprings here we can consider it as a clone here we can consider it as a clone clone cloning and similar to other clone that means exact copy of a one organism is called as a clone okay here the one parent cell it will undergo division and it will give rise these offsprings and these two are identical to each other so that's why we calling it as a clone and the next in the sexual reproduction here the genetic variations will be present here genetic variations genetic variations will be present so here the parent cell and the new individuals they are not similar to each other so the parent and the daughter cell or offspring or offspring they are dissimilar to each other they are dissimilar to each other dissimilar to each other so this is a sexual reproduction it is like in a human beings human beings our parents they are they look somewhat different they look somewhat different when we when they compare with us when they compare with us and our our children will be different when compared with us okay so there will be a variations variation that means changes from our parents to the children so here also the parents and offsprings they are dissimilar to each other we are also dissimilar to the parents but we have some characters that are carrying from our parents okay and we are also sharing our characters to our children so in this way we'll share and there is no similarity no similarity meek ippudu me father unnaru father nu same equal ga unnara ledhu kada different ga untaru kada kachithanga obviously different ga ne untaru there is a chance there is a chance they may get a same morphological appearance but the same character should not be should not be come if there is a cross mover so we will discuss in your meiosis and mitosis there you can identify and there is another chapter called as principles of inheritance and variations that uh, that uh, you are going to deal in your second year class there you will confirm all the things that um, you might have some doubts those are clarified in that sessions so here the genetic variations will be present so the parent and the offspring they are dissimilar to the each other so this is the main difference but you have to ask what is about the vegetative reproduction the vegetative reproduction it is also a type of asexual reproduction remember this is very important one that means 
द वेजिटेटिव रिप्रोडक्शन द वेजिटेटिव रिप्रोडक्शन इट इज अ टाइप ऑफ इज अ टाइप ऑफ असेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन इट इज अ टाइप ऑफ असेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन रिमेंबर दिस वेल सो वॉट इज द डिफरेंस विद द वेजिटेटिव रिप्रोडक्शन एंड द असेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन द नाउ वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड सो वेजिटेटिव रिप्रोडक्शन एंड द asexual reproduction so there is a minor difference there is a minor difference with the vegetative and asexual reproduction in the vegetative reproduction the plant part the plant part the plant part it will undergo detachment or it will undergo fragmentation it will cut from the plant body so a part of the plant body give rise a new individual give rise a new individual and the asexual reproduction here it will not involve plant part here itself a one parent the one parent this is involving in the reproduction procedure so entire plant body it is involving in the asexual reproduction so here the plant plant produces here the plant it will produces offsprings plant it will produces the offsprings okay so this is from the plant part here the entire plant it will undergo a reproduction procedure so if you consider a multicellular organism that will be different if you consider a unicellular organism that will be different so we'll discuss what is the difference with the vegetative reproduction that was done by algae and the fungi bryophytes pteridophytes and how the asexual reproduction is going to takes place in bryophytes and pteridophytes also so directly we'll go with the asexual reproduction what are the types of asexual reproduction uh, that are involved in the plants okay so once again what is the difference with the asexual and the sexual reproduction here there is an involvement of only one parent and the, in the sexual reproduction here the involvement of male and female parents and here the parents they are exactly or the offsprings they are exactly similar to the parents so the giving offsprings they are similar to each other so that's why these are called as clones and here the genetic variations will be there the, there is somewhat dissimilarity with the parents and the children so that is called as genetic variations from parents to the offspring so they are dissimilar to each other same aithe undu different ga ne untar so what is the difference with the vegetative and asexual reproduction remember that the vegetative reproduction it is also a type of sexual reproduction in the vegetative reproduction the the plant part the plant part it will give rise a new individual and there the asexual reproduction in the asexual reproduction here these plant this plant body it will produces the offsprings so if it is a unicellular then the entire parent it will divided into two offsprings if it is a multicellular organism there it will produce a spores so we will discuss that next one is asexual reproduction by the 
division process. So one parent, this parent it will give rise to two new individuals, two new individuals, and these we are considered it as a clones because they are similar in their structures. So these are considered as a clones. Okay. So where you can observe this binary fission, it this binary fission is observed in unicellular organisms. In unicellular organisms, examples are unicellular organisms. Organisms examples are Monera. Monera and the unicellular eukaryotes are also included under the Protista. So Protista. And you can also include an algae that is called as Chlamydomonas. Chlamydomonas it is unicellular. So here you can include a Chlamydomonas. So all the unicellular organisms like Monera, Protista and the Chlamydomonas they will go with the binary fission. And there is another one called as a multiple fissions. Multiple fissions are exhibited by the Plasmodian species. When it is entered into the host it will undergo multiple fissions to produce a new offspring faster. So that is about the animal that is, a, that is involved in the geology. So you can also include here that is a multiple fission. And the next one is asexual spores. The spore formation it is also included under here. And another one is called as a budding. Budding is also there. So consider the budding it is the second one. Budding is nothing but a part of the plant. Here it will not undergo uh, equal division. Here it is undergoing an equal divisions. Equal division. Ante? Iri kattika saganga illa atuvaipu itvaipu panchesi ala panchesi offsprings ni form jesundi. Ante kada? Unna tvanti dhani kattika atuvaipu sagam itvaipu sagam. Same. Unna anta panchita dhani evan tamu? Equal. Equal divisions will take place in the binary fission. But when we come to the binary budding here there is an involvement of unequal division. Here there is an unequal division. Unequal division of the parent cell. And there, so consider this is a parent plant. Parent plant. It will undergo an unequal divisions like this one. So here it will have one nucleus and it will have other nucleus. So thereby this is a new cell. This is a new cell. This new cell, it can give rise to a new new species or new plant. So this cell, it will give rise to a new individual or new offspring. Okay. So this is a body, but this is particularly experienced by the yeast cells. Example for this one is yeast cells. Yeast cells there, we should not write like this one actually. This is an yeast cell, consider. It will have a extra bud like this one. This is called one bud. This is called as a bud. So this yeast cell, it will undergo unequal division and it will produce this bud. This bud is able to survive into a new, new plant. It is able to survive into a new individual that is called as a yeast. Extra yeast it can be arise from the budding procedure. And the next one is Hydra. Yeah, in your um, 7th or 8th standard, uh, you may heard about a Hydra. Hydra, if it is like this one, if it is having a plant, if it is having uh, budding on this Hydra, it will detach us from this Hydra and it will develop into a new individual Hydra. So that is also included under budding. And here, if you consider these yeast cells, here they are showing exogenous budding. Here they are showing exogenous budding. Exogenous budding and bite coach in the button. Button is a bite coach, then exogenous budding. There is another one called as endogenous budding. So, in the endogenous budding, particularly you can observe in the Spongilla. You can observe in the spongilla. Spongilla. Freshwater spongy. Spongilla. So consider this is a sponge. So inside. Inside it will undergo many.
the, these birds are deposited inside. So this type of budding is called as endogenous budding. So endogenous budding that was exhibited by the spongilla that is a freshwater sponge. So next one is a third type of a sexual reproduction is a spore formation. Spore formation. So these spores are formed by uh, bryophytes. Bryophytes and pteridophytes. They will form a spores. So fungi species, bryophytes and pteridophytes, they will form a spores. Here particularly we can include fungi and the bryophytes. Okay. So these spores, particularly this is an asexual type of reproduction that was exhibited by the fungi and some and the bryophytes and some species of pteridophytes also. So the examples are the fungi, bryophytes, bryophytes and some species of pteridophytes they will undergo this type of spore formation. So what is the spore formation? These spores are formed when there is an unfavorable conditions. During the favorable conditions, it will undergo uh, either the vegetative fragment, vegetative uh, propagation or they may go with the sexual reproduction. But if it is an unfavorable conditions, they will form uh, spores. So these spores, they can withstand at a high temperature and a high pH or at anywhere they can live easily. So here they will form and spores, these spores particularly which are resistant to the high temperatures and the high climatic conditions, those are called as endospores. Those are called as endospores. These spores are formed in the unfavorable conditions. It is formed in the unfavorable conditions. Unfavorable conditions. Okay. So, if you consider, if you consider a rhizopus, rhizopus, here these rhizopus during unfavorable conditions, these rhizopus during unfavorable conditions, it will form a sporangium, it will form a sporangium and this is a knot like structure that is present at the edge of these rhizopus. So, this is a sporangium. So, it will form a sporangium. This sporangium, it will have many spores. It will have many spores. So, many spores will be present here. Okay. So, many spores that will be present inside the sporangium. So, this type of sporangium is considered as basidiocarps or basidiosporangium. You, you will get in your next sessions. Okay. So, the spores that are present inside the sporangium, the rhizopus, it is famously called it as a bread bond. It is also called as a bread bond. Bread bond. Where in unfavorable conditions, it will form a spores inside the sporangium. And there is another, another one called as penicillin. Penicillin. In the penicillin, here it will also form spores. But these spores, they will be present like this one. So it will have this one. And here the spores, they will be germinated on the palmilla. They will be germinated on the palmilla. So in this way, they will germinate like this one. Okay. So the penicillium, it will undergo asexual reproduction by the a spores, these spores are considered as conidiospores. So here these are considered as a conidia. Conidia. So on the conidia there will be a spores, these are called as conidiospores. Conidiospores. So if the spores they are arising on the surface, those type of spores are considered as conidiospores. If they are present, if the all the spores they are present inside the sporangium, those type are considered as basidiospores. Basidiospores. Okay. So basidiospores are particularly present in the rhizopus and the penicillium here it will have a conidiospores. That means exogenously all the spores are arranged here. It is an endogenous procedure and it is an exogenous procedure. 
eggs are nothing but out of the sporangium out of the sporangium there will be a spores so that's why here it is an exogenous exogenous spore formation exogenous spore formation okay and in the rhizopus in the rhizopus here we can consider a endogenous endogenous spore formation endogenous spore formation okay so in this way the rhizopus and the penicillium they will undergo asexual reproduction by the formation of spores when they will form these spores will be formed under unfavorable conditions that means if the uh, water is uh, not available if the light is not sufficient if the um, what we can consider if the temperature is high then under these unfavorable conditions these fungi and the bryophytes and the bio bryophytes which are having a simple organization which are having simple organization they will go with the spore formation and the first one is our uh, endospores these endospores they have to they have to they have to uh, okay these endospores at a high climatic range that means if the high temperature is there high ph or high salinity even though they will live they will live because of the presence of one acid called as calcium dipicolic acid because of calcium dipicolic acid these endospores they will live in a high extreme conditions okay so under unfavorable conditions some of them will form these endospores these endosperm endospores if they get a favorable conditions they will give into a new plant and the next one is rhizopus it is also called as a bread mound here all the spores the during unfavorable conditions all the spores they will be present inside the sporangium if the spores are covered within the sporangium that type of spores are considered as basidio spores and the next one penicillin this penicillin here the spores that are grown on the conidia so these exogenous spores are considered as conidio spores okay so conidio spores these are exogenous spore, spore formation and in the rhizopus it is an endogenous spore formation okay <coughs> asexual reproduction we discussed with the three one three steps in that the first one is binary division here the parent cell it will undergo division process mitotic process and it will give rise to a new individuals and these two are similar to each other that's why we call it as a clones and the next one is what are example that we can include here unicellular organisms like monera protista and the chlamydomonas and next one is budding it is called as an equal division but in binary division it is an equal division here because of unequal division of the yeast cell it will give rise a bud this bud is an exogenous budding but you have another type that is endogenous budding it is present in the spongilla it is a fresh water spongy so number of buds there will be present inside the spongilla so this is called as endogenous budding and the next one is spore formation spore formation is done by fungi and the unicellular or uh, unicellular organisms and uh, bryophytes some bryophytes some bryophytes they will undergo with the spore formation endospores they are formed at the unfavorable conditions they can withstand at high temperatures high ph high salinity anything they can survive and if the favorable conditions are there then it will give rise to a new individual and the next one rhizopus here it will exhibit a different pattern the spores are present inside the sporangium so here it is an endogenous spore formation was exhibited by the rhizopus that is bread mold and the next one is penicillin penicillin here the spores are formed out of the sporangium so all the conidia there will be a spores these spores are considered as conidio spores and it is called as exogenous spore formation and after this we will go with the how the bryophytes and pteridophytes they will be bryophytes and pteridophytes how they are going to give rise a new individual oh i can't get this one 
wait a minute by bryophytes we have to discuss that so vegetative propagation vegetative propagation what is mean by vegetative propagation any plant part it will give rise a new plant is considered as a vegetative propagation so during this vegetative propagation the a plant the plant or the bryophyte that is considered as a liverwort the bryophyte that is considered as a liver wart liver wart or we can also consider it as a marchantia so marchantia it will undergo a special type of vegetative reproduction by the formation of gamete cups by the formation of gamete cups so it will undergo a special type of vegetative propagation already we discussed about the gamete cups gametes in the plant in the particularly during the bryophytes liver warts okay so these gametes these are multicellular and they are chloroplast containing organelles which are undergoing a photosynthesis there it can give rise to a new plant and the next this vegetative propagation was exhibited by the moths moths like rhizopus in the spore formation we discussed about this one so these moulds moulds that is a rhizopus the rhizopus it will also undergo a vegetative fragmentation or vegetative propagation by giving rise a new individual new individual that means here it will, it will also undergo fragmentation so new fragment it will get, develop into a new plant new plants it will develop next one is yeah next one after vegetative propagation so what are the different angiospermic plants they will exhibit a vegetative propagation so the angiospermic plants
These angiospermic plants they will exhibit different types of vegetative propagation. In that we can include stolons, stolons, runners, runners, suckers, bulbs, bulbins, bulbs, bulbins. Yes, stolons, runners, suckers, bulbs, bulbins. And there is called as palm, palm, rhizome, rhizome, palm, rhizome. And another one is stolons, runners, suckers, bulbs, bulbils, palms, rhizome. And um, they will undergo vegetative propagation by means of ice, ice that is tubers, tubers. Tubers they will also undergo vegetative propagation because they will have ice. These ice, if you placed on the soil, then it will develop into a new potato plant. New potato plant. So these are the angiospermic plants. They will undergo vegetative propagation by different methods. The stolons, the stolons are particularly we can see in the jasmine plants where the lateral bud it will grow obliquely for some time. Then it will grow towards the soil. Towards the soil, and if if this uh, branch it will touches the soil, there it will develop an adventitious roots. Then it can develop into a new plant. So that is about the stolons. And the runners, these are exhibited by the grass families and the oxalis. They will exhibit these runners. That means these grasses when they are growing on the surface of soil, on the surface of soil, there. If if these if these uh, nodal part nodal and internodal part if these touches to the ground then the nodal part it will give rise to a new roots new adventitious roots so that is about the runners and the next one is suckers suckers here this is a plant so the lateral branch it will grow towards the soil and it will grow horizontally for some time. At a favorable conditions, it will come out of the soil. There, it will develop into a new plant. So, these suckers are particularly present in the chrysanthemum. And the next one is bulbs. Bulbs are exhibited by the onions, and the bulbils. These are exhibited by Dioscorea and Agave Americana. And the next one is corn. Corn that was exhibited by Colocasia, and the rhizome that was exhibited by the banana, banana and ginger also. And the next one is tubers. Tubers they will undergo vegetative propagation. Example is potato. But here we cannot consider these tuber as a root. Storage root. It is a stem tuber. It is a stem tuber. And another one called as offset. Offset. The pistia and dicornia they will undergo vegetative propagation by offsets where the internodes. Where the internodes they are hollow. And they are particularly helpful in the buoyancy of the pistia and icornia on the surface of water. Okay, so these are the vegetative propagations by the angiospermic plants. There are many are there. So particularly we can consider the rhizome. This rhizome was exhibited by banana, and that is also exhibited by the ginger. Ginger. So banana it will also propagated by the rhizome and the ginger it is also propagated by the by the rhizome. So you have to remember this example because they are asking many times this banana it is undergoing a vegetative propagation by banana by rhizome and it is also undergoing a vegetative propagation by suckers. It will also undergoing a vegetative propagation by suckers or also. So banana, two types of vegetative propagations. First one is rhizome, and the next one is sucker. So these two are present in the banana. Next, after this, for the vegetative propagation, there is a best example that we can include is water hyacinth. That is water hyacinth. So once again, we'll go with this one. So asexual reproduction by the pteridophytes and the bryophytes. They will exhibit the spores. These spores they are haploid. On germination, they will give rise to a gametophyte, and this gametophyte it is also haploid one. 
and the next one is fragmentation the fragmentation was exhibited by algae and there is another animal that we can include is planaria that is for the example of regeneration that is an example of regeneration so regeneration that was done by planaria and the fragmentation this is done by algae if there is a fragmentation if there is a cut they will develop into a new plant each fragment it will develop into a new plant and the vegetative propagation fragmentation it is also comes under the vegetative propagation so bryophytes particularly the liverworts they will vegetatively propagated by a gametes and the next one is mouse uh, that means a rhizopus these rhizopus it will detaches the thallus and it will develop into a new plant we here we cannot consider it as a thallus here we have to consider that mycelium the mycelium it will detaches and it will grow into a new plant and the next one is mushrooms actually mushrooms those are also vegetative propagules those are also vegetative propagules so mushrooms particularly mushrooms mushrooms that is agaricus agaricus bisporus it is an edible mushroom here also it is undergoing a vegetative propagation then if it detaches from the parent plant body then it will develop into a new plant it will develop into a new plant so all the vegetative propagations of these angiosperms are together considered as vegetative propagules those are considered as vegetative propagules okay so there are many vegetative propagules that we can include the first one is stolons example for the stolon is jasmine and the runners example is oxalis and the grasses and the suckers example that is chrysanthemum and the bulbs example is onion bulbils example diascoria and the agave americana and the corm example is colocasia rhizome example is rhizome example is banana and the ginger tubers example is potato offsets example pistia and iconia and famously we have to describe with the uh, one water hyacinth regarding the vegetative propagation we have to discuss one thing that is water hyacinth what is water hyacinth this water hyacinth it is considered as terror of bengal this is considered as a terror of bengal these water hyacinth commonly we can consider it as a icornia commonly we can consider it as a icornia it will undergo vegetative propagation by offsets it will undergo vegetative propagation by offsets here these water hyacinth it is it is profusely grown on the water area where the water is standing water is there there it will grow profusely so why we call it as a terror of bengal because if there is a stand standard water if this standard water is there this hyacinth water hyacinth it will grow profusely it will grow profusely there the entire area that is with icarnia only and this icarnia it will easily uptake the dissolved oxygen so because of uptake of all the oxygen the fishes that are present on that pond they will get die they will get die so this water hyacinth this is introduced in india because of their beautiful blue colors blue and purple color but they grow profusely that now we can consider it as a weed plant now we can consider it as a weed plant it is because of the continuous growth by the offsets we are unable to control this growth of water hyacinth that's why it is called as terror of bengal so this is about the asexual reproduction that was exhibited by different plant species and how the algae bryophytes pteridophytes and angiosperms they will exhibit a vegetative propagation and asexual reproduction so till now we complete this one and the next session we are going to discuss with the asexual reproduction asexual reproduction is over then we are going to discuss with the sexual reproduction thank you